you know, for me, this journey and finding the, you know, the optimal uh, prostate cancer it began many years ago. And it starts with a story. Uh, many years ago, we used to live in a nice little island community. And uh, I had a gentleman who was a friend of mine. It was at our, one of our, you know, his friends socially, young man, his, in his late 40s. And we did a, with my partner, we performed a radical prostatectomy procedure. It went beautifully. My partner congratulated. He said that was one of the prettiest operations I've ever seen. And so I was feeling great about it. One little problem. When I saw that man back for his post-operative visit, he was incontinent, he was wet, he was in a diaper, and I said, oh, that's gonna get better, that's gonna get better. A year later, it still wasn't better. The quality of his life was destroyed. And we eventually had to install something called an artificial sphincter and they controlled his continence. But I began to think, how can one do an operation perfectly, beautifully, anatomically, precisely, and have that outcome? And, and the reality is, is a certain number of patients that we operate on are going to have those severe problems. They're gonna lose sexual function, they're gonna be incontinent, and for a man who's vibrant, who had nothing wrong with him until someone did a PSA, that is socially isolating, it's depressing, and for a lot of these men, they view their life as being over. And I realized there had to be a better way. We could do this better. So my journey began around the year 2000 looking at cryotherapy or freezing of the prostate as a non-surgical or less invasive option. And I think cryotherapy did a beautiful job of destroying tissue and killing prostate cancer tissue. But I realized very quickly that it was very difficult to control the ice ball around the nerves that control sexual function. And we learned that there's a very high risk of erectile dysfunction with cryotherapy. Not so much incontinence, because these men did beautifully in terms of urinary control, but it was very hard to maintain normal sexual function. In fact, it was rare to do that after cryotherapy. So around 2004, a colleague of mine told me about this revolution in it, this revolutionary technology out of Europe called high intensity focused ultrasound. I was skeptical about it because I said, well, that doesn't make a lot of sense. But I, for the next year or so, I began to study it. I made a trip to England, and then I went to the Dominican Republic. I watched at least 50 procedures. And although the technology back in 2005 was crude, I realized that there really was something to this because we've seen technology change so quickly. You know, I remember a bag phone. I remember a big suitcase phone, right? And, and you know, now, you know, I look at my iPhone and I can't believe that I used to have a suitcase phone. But I realized the same technical advancement would occur with this. So I stayed with it. I treated my very first patient with this from my practice in the Carolinas, I believe in 2006. And I never looked back. And it's been a quest. It's been a quest to continually understand how to do this better, working with the manufacturer, how to improve the technology, how to get, how to refine the treatment techniques, how to reduce the side effects. And I can literally tell you that in the 10 years that I traveled outside of the United States, there wasn't a single month that I wasn't on an airplane in a foreign country, because that's all we had. It's the only place we can do this, treating patients from around the country, around the United States. But from that experience, if we look at the software development, the hardware development, and really what's important is the intellectual way we began to approach this. It's, it's been revolutionary. And the treatment that I do today in which we, we take the MRI, we marry it to, we fuse it to the ultrasound, we can see where the most significant tumor is sitting in the prostate, and we can layer energy over that area and put a higher, what's called, thermal dose on top of that tumor. And conversely, look at the critical structures like the urethra, the urinary channel, the bladder neck, the external sphincter, the nerve bundles that control erections. We can see those structures. And now we can personalize that treatment to fit that man's cancer. That is revolutionary. That's different. And I never could have conceived in 2005 we'd get really to that level, but I don't think we're done yet. 